Welcome to episode two of Huawei Decoded, a series where Huawei employees answer questions from the internet. And today I am joined by our resident networking expert, the executive advisor of our carrier marketing team. His name is Brian Chamberlain, and welcome, Brian. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for joining us. Are you ready to face the internet? Whenever you're ready. <laughs> okay. This first question, I first need to ask you something personal. Okay. okay. Um, have you received your COVID vaccination? Several of them. Several of them. Okay, so the internet wants to know, are you emitting a 5G signal right now? Well, when I have my cell phone on me, of course I am, but she took it away, so no, right now. Oh, you know, so this, <laughs> getting vaccines doesn't cause you to have, be a 5G base station, essentially. You saw how big that phone was, right? <laughs> Can you imagine that going through my veins? <laughs> okay, so another question that's often asked on the internet mm -hmm. is, how is 5G different from 4G? Okay, that's a fair question. Um, from a consumer's point of view, uh, with a 5G network, if you send me one of those 100 megabit PowerPoints, mm -hmm. then it just opens. Okay. On a 4G network, well, then I'm waiting and waiting, and then it times out and fails to open, which is why I never open your email. <laughs> I was going to ask that. I was like, wait, you never open my emails. <laughs> Once I got my 5G phone now, you can send me those big PowerPoints. It's no problem. Okay. So it's a matter of speed then. It's a matter of speed. Okay. Now, 5G also has a different value, but it's for industry. We have a lot of features in 5G that are designed to help industry operate equipment, uh, remote controlled machines and um, AGVs, for example. Um, these work a lot better on a 5G network than on a 4G network because of latency, the delays in the network. Okay, okay. and why wouldn't you use like uh, fixed wires for something like that? I mean, can you imagine an AGV with a fiber trailing around behind it? I can. It wouldn't be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you see the answer. Okay, okay. Um, so we got another question here. Um, this is a little open-ended, so feel free to answer it however you want. But okay. <laughs> it's a big question. How does Huawei 5G work? Definitely an internet when question. With all the technical details. <laughs> Okay, again, the simple answer is the Huawei 5G works the exact same way that everybody's 5G works. We work in an industry defined by standards. So in order to follow those standards, we have to deliver the same kind of signal that everybody is sending. The difference between Huawei's um, equipment and the equipment from our competitors tends to be in terms of um, the power they're, they're outputting and the energy they consume. Okay, so if you're using Huawei antennas, our antennas tend to cover more area, so um, you don't have to build as many base stations. Um, they also tend to consume less electricity, so your electric bill's cheaper. This is why customers choose this over and over again. Is 5G safe? Is 5G safe? I love this one because this is something that my customers ask me on a regular basis, really? okay. particularly the media customers that come in. Um, the answer is clearly that 5G is being used by hundreds of millions of people today, and there hasn't been this massive uptick in brain cancer. Um, so clearly, there is the danger is being misdirected. Um, in fact, if you think about um, safety and electromagnetic radiation, um, when you see those big antennas out there, you think that's the scary thing. But the amount of energy hitting your body is a function of distance. Um, so that big antenna half a kilometer, a kilometer away is getting very little power to you. Okay. Is Huawei 5G still banned? It depends entirely on what country we're talking about. There are some countries that have decided to ban Huawei's equipment from their networks. Uh, we just have to follow the rules of those countries. So if some countries don't want to buy Huawei equipment, fine. We'll go other places that welcome us. And there's still lots and lots of countries around the world that are benefiting from Huawei's technology. And the ones who choose to ban us, well, they can just go pay a premium for somebody else's. That actually kind of reminds us. So this is something I've seen on the internet before, and I didn't prepare this for this, but I'm kind of curious what your thoughts are on this. Sometimes when Huawei's name comes up on sites like Reddit or something, people always say, oh, Huawei, they, they stole 5G technology from the US. Like, what are your thoughts on that? If we tried to partner with other companies, they would never give us advanced stuff. If we tried to steal, they would we would never be able to get the advanced technology. The only way we could be a company to deliver advanced solutions is if we did the R&D ourselves. Um, going forward today, we're the number one contributor to 5G patents. Um, so no, we're not stealing, we're innovating, and we're sharing that innovations uh, with the world. That's actually another really good question because it's another thing I get asked a lot 
uh, when I meet with um, our customers? Uh, and the answer is no. Um, Wi-Fi has its place, 5G has its place. Wi-Fi is a much simpler protocol and the pro solutions are much cheaper. Uh, the problem is the reliability is not always there. Um, 5G on the other hand, you're going to pay more money, uh, but you get extra security and extra reliability for that. Um, so if you need security and reliability, 5G is really the way to go. If you need the lowest cost solution, Wi-Fi is always going to be cheaper. Brian, thanks a lot for your time. Um, I really appreciate it. And for everyone out there, stay tuned to our next episode, which is going to focus on cybersecurity.